Hey, this is Jake in California again. Uh, tonight I'm going to be showing you my beer brewing apparatus. And we're also going to be working on a uh, wort chiller. Uh, it's a counterflow wort chiller. You see a lot of the folks have them, uh, and I'll describe it here in a moment. But uh, what you have to do when you're cooking your beer is, just as a general rundown, you have a brew kettle um, and a mash tun. And what you do is you you take your mash tun and you put your grains in it and you heat the water to about 150, 160. I'd have to look at it exactly. And you do that for about an hour. And what that does is it causes the enzymes to convert the starches into sugar and then you, you get all the, the uh, fermentable sugars out of your grain. And then what you do after that is you take your hops and other things and you basically make a tea by boiling it for an hour. And you have to do those two things separately, otherwise you'll screw up the grains versus the uh, versus the, the hops or whatever additions you're going to make, the tea. And what I've done is, I saw a friend of mine who was um, having a, a combination. He took an old keg and uh, turned it into kind of a combination so that you use it first for your, uh, uh, for your mash tun. And then when you pull, pull your grains back out, then you throw in your hops and things and you boil it all for an hour. But what you need to do when you're done is you have to take that boiling liquid very quickly down to a fermentable temperature which is you know between 50 and 80 degrees you got to cool it down quickly a lot of folks will take their carboy throw it in a bathtub full of ice or they'll put a chiller into the beer an immersion chiller and chill it down those things take a while so what i'm building is an immersion chiller which gets it really cold really quickly just like that literally all you have to do is run it through the coil and it comes out cold so i'm going to show you how i'm doing that um, just a design that i picked up off the internet and uh, a friend of mine, how he did it, so my own thing. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you my beer making uh, apparatus and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna let you in on the closet here. What we have going on is I have a wall of cabinets here in my garage. Let me zoom out a bit, see if I can do that. But wall of cabinets and then each of these is kind of like, what's behind door number three? If you look here, you'll see in this door, I have cabinets full of old beer bottles and old wine bottles, and I even have some old egg cartons because I have chickens in the back. But I keep the keep the empties in here. And when I'm ready to do a batch, I soak these in the sink, get all the labels off of, and then I rebottle them. But you can see there's a lot in there. So, door number two is my brewing cabinet. I have supplies in here for brewing. You can see I have some some things back here that are actually brewing. These two are mead. These three are empty. And then of course here's my better beer bottle and this is my grain bill for the next batch. And a few other things. Then of course I have some great, uh, great boxes and things down here. And I'm actually going to be doing a review of this beer in another video. This is a uh, Half Legem Triple. This is a uh, Abbey beer from Belgium. So. That'll be my next review, but for now we're going to put that back in here to hang out with the others. And then, this is the one I'm most proud of, door number three. Well, I'm sorry, not this one. Door number four has the good stuff. Down here I just keep water for emergencies. Lots of water. But, let's see, door number four. Now that's what I like. This is a project I've been working on to get my, my brewing going. And as you can see, I have a keg in here and some torches. I'm going to pull these out real quick. This is some equipment that I'm converting to serve as my combination brew kettle. Are you going to like this? Hang on a sec. Put the camera back over here. I'm going to pull out my modified keg. So what I have here is just a basic keg. Keg, everyone's seen a keg? If you haven't seen a keg then you need to drink more beer. But what I've done here is normally this is round and it has a pressure adapter up here on the top. What we've done is we plasma torch the top off. Cut it right off. And then what I did was I ground this edge down so that it won't cut me. 
ground it down with a, a file, cleaned it up, and then I scrubbed the whole thing with uh, uh, steel wool. So, anyway, you can see inside it's nice and clean. What I did here was we cut a hole on the side, the proper diameter, and we attached this high temperature ball valve. And it was important to get a high temperature ball valve because otherwise uh, you would be really, really, really having a leak everywhere when you went to cook this thing up. So, this is a high temperature ball, ball valve. I think it cost me 35, 40 bucks. And on the inside, it has a. Let me see if I can zoom here. This is a new camera, so I'm still getting used to it. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, there we go. High temperature stainless steel uh, hardware, and that's actually a high temperature grommet you see behind there. That that little bit of red brown poking out. So, anyway, this will take the heat so that we can cook beer. And this is a lid. It's just an aluminum lid. It actually came from a turkey burner kit from Home Depot. You can deep fry a turkey in the pot. And this hole here is for a thermometer. So what I'm going to be doing is taking the thermometer that came in the kit and you put it here in the hole. And that sits down Whoop. That sits down inside the... Hang on. Still getting used to this. Still getting used to this. I'll get the hang of it in a few, few different more times. But what you do is... Figure out your camera before you start making videos, right? Ha ha ha. I'm a funny guy. So, go ahead and put your thermometer down here. And that'll tell you the temperature of the wart. And it'll all be great. So, read and follow all warnings and instructions. Yeah, like I'm going to do that. Mad scientist, that's what we got to do. Anybody who does this has to be a little bit crazy. Just a little. Alright, so, yeah, that's the un unimportant part. So, I'm going to put this back together. Um, anyway, so, when I've had a hard day in court... And I don't want to deal with the world's problems anymore. I come home and make beer. And I contribute to my own problems, right? Alright, so put that away. Alright, so we got the brew kettle here. You may ask, how do I heat something on a brew kettle this big? Well, that's where we have the super turkey burner. I call this the turkey burner because this came as part of a kit. This is the burner for a deep fryer, a turkey deep fryer. And after Thanksgiving, when they had a bunch left at Home Depot, they put these on sale because they want to get rid of them. So what you do is you just hook your, hook your gas valve up to a bottle, and that goes through the hose here. And it turns into this nice burner right here, and the flame gets really big. And what you do is you, you set your keg kettle. Up on top of that. So that it looks like that. So you have your, your turkey burner and your keg kettle. And that's where you do your business, making some beer. So, anyway, that's sort of step one. So let's just this is just kind of an introduction to to my beer making setup here. Uh, that's step one. Now, the next video is going to be how to make an immersion chiller, or not an immersion chiller, a counterflow chiller with the parts that you see here. We have high temperature rubber hose, check. 20 feet of 3 8 copper coil, check. Miscellaneous hardware and adapters, check. 
gas torches, check. Some solder. As I mentioned earlier, just a little bit of crazy. All right, so that's that's the intro. We'll move on to the video next.